Hey guys, what's going on? Ghost Dragon 1182 here, and in this video, I want to talk about the news article I seen today that apparently uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2 are disappearing from the Wii U Virtual Console in Japan, and with no possibility of returning. Now it's unclear at the moment if that's going to affect Western owners or anything like that. And this isn't the first time that games have disappeared from a digital platform. Uh, Bullet Storm disappeared from Steam for a little bit and then came back. Um, the Marvel X-Men and other like Marvel licenses that Activision, Activision had, they disappeared and actually I don't think any of them have come back. Like Deadpool has no return in sight and I think some of the other ones haven't come back. I could be wrong on that but uh, but it brings up something that I'd always been concerned with when it comes to digital distribution. And at the, the time when digital distribution first started becoming like a thing, I was fairly dead set against it. Um, this was back still like with the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 days where I was like, you know, I'll, I want a physical copy of the games that I buy. That way I'll always have access to the game. And then I built a PC and I got to mess with, start using Steam and it was so convenient that I was, I embraced the idea of digital distribution to the point where most of my current gen games for the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One are digital games. Especially since, too, like with those particular consoles, you had to install the games anyways if you bought the physical copy, so I just didn't feel the need to run out to the store and buy a disc. Now, there are some disc-based games that I do have, but the thing is, is when it comes to, you know, expiring licenses and uh, whatever's going on with the Sonic the Hedgehog deal with the uh, virtual console, it brings in the question, like, do you actually ever own anything that you buy digitally? And really, you don't, because whenever you agree to the terms and conditions of the end-user license agreement, you're basically saying you're just, you purchased a license to play the game for however long they decide to leave it out. And it's an unfortunate downside we're going to have to deal with if digital is the way of the future. Uh, but there's got to be... There needs to be more consumer protection in place. Uh, if you spend $60 on a game and then eventually you do not have access to that game, that's not consumer friendly. That's very much against what I would consider good business practice. Uh, I know in certain circumstances it can't be helped, like when, like with the Star Wars stuff and the Marvel stuff, there's going to be licensing issues, but, you know, hopefully those issues are taken care of quick and the games end up back on the shops, which seems to be the case with the Star Wars stuff. Now, it's inevitable that someday the next Sony console or Microsoft console is going to completely do away with physical mediums because it's cheaper to take a product, throw it up on a digital store, and not have to manufacture CDs and cases and all that. So they'd be maximizing their profits because they're not losing anything through software sales or uh, to replace the cost of manufacturing the physical medium. Now, it's a mixed thing. It's more convenient, yes. Um, I don't think the pricing on the consoles is quite where it needs to be for some digital games uh, because for instance if if a game's five or six years old more often than not you still see it for fifty sixty dollars on the virtu on a uh, storefront whereas if you go to a brick and mortar store you could probably pick it up for twenty thirty dollars if you're buying it new you know even cheaper if you're buying it used at gamestop or whatever but so, I mean, there is things that they need to work out, and I think Steam's probably got the best digital model so far. Uh, the console manufacturers could learn a lot from them, but, you know, I wouldn't hold your breath to see Sony and Microsoft model their stores after what Valve has done. I could be wrong, but just from the way console manufacturers are, I just don't foresee it. Uh, but there's got to be some kind of protection in place where that you can get that game again or that game will be available to you should you, let's say, like with the PT thing on the PlayStation 4, let's say you ran out of hard drive space and you deleted PT off of there thinking, oh, it'll be there forever and I'll be able to download it again if I want to play it. And then 
you know, everything happened at Konami with Kojima and everything, and then PT disappeared from the uh, PlayStation Store. So I feel like if there's going to be a more digital future, there needs to be extra protection put into place. There needs to be something that makes the consumer feel secure with their purchase and that they have access to that purchase at any point in time. Uh, you know, I know CDs and stuff, they wear out over time and uh, things like that, but I mean, you still see people playing old classic Nintendo games on Nintendo on NES consoles with their original cartridges, and yeah, maybe the batteries don't work for the save systems, like in a Zelda game or anything like that, but they can put that game in and play it whenever they want. You know, they can't do that with... If Nintendo would decide that they want to pull all the Zelda games from the Virtual Console, then you're up shit creek without a paddle. And... I don't know what they could do to, like, add a sense of safety or a guarantee to your purchase, because, I mean, really, outside of first-party published titles, there isn't really anything they can do to guarantee, like, that a license will be held. It's, it, and it really gets sticky with the license games, like, based on movies and comic book franchises and things like that, but there needs to be some kind of system... Where if the game is no longer available, even if you just, like, let the consumer uh, trade that purchase for a purchase of an equal or lesser value, then I think that would be something that would alleviate some fears of an all-digital digital future. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if something else you see coming down the line is like a digital red box, where... You buy a console and you never actually even pay for the game. You just, like, say 10 bucks and you have it, access to it for a week or something like that. That model wouldn't surprise me either. There's a lot of things that they could do. There's a lot of things that can potentially end up screwing the customer. But at this point in the game, it's kind of too early to really say which way they're going to go. But, I mean, whatever they end up doing, it's going to be for their best interest, not ours, obviously. And that's what's scary, especially with, you know, this isn't like the first time we've seen these games disappearing from digital marketplaces. And I'm sure it's not going to be the last that we see these games disappearing from digital marketplaces. So, and, and ultimately what it'll end up doing is it'll push more people towards, like for older console games, it'll just push people towards emulators, like an NES emulator or a Sega emulator, things like that, because then, one, they don't necessarily have to pay for anything, and two, they can always have the game there and playable on their PC. Or I mean, it doesn't take a very strong PC to run a NES emulator or a Super Nintendo emulator. Um, you need a little bit more horsepower if you get into, like, a GameCube or a PlayStation 2 emulator, but, I mean, let's be honest, all of this would end up doing... If there isn't anything put in place to secure your purchase, is just drive more people towards uh, piracy and finding other more creative ways to get the games that they want to get. And then that's just going to hurt the honest people, I guess you could say, or um, just further demonize like the whole pirating thing on in gaming and shit like that. I don't know. I mean, it's there's a lot here that could go one way or another, and it's something that there's just not enough information out to come to a full conclusion yet outside of just like conjecture of like oh well you know people like ea they're just gonna fuck us anyways um so i mean we'll have to see i don't know you know it, probably more concrete ideas of what the console manufacturers futures or future plans will be will be revealed whenever they inevitably start talking about their next gen consoles uh, we might even see it with the Nintendo NX, uh, with whatever they decide to end up doing. But, uh, I mean, there's a lot of rumors there for the NX console. I'm not going to get into any of that until we get something concrete. Because, I mean, as far as console specs and console pre-release stuff, there's so much to shovel through that uh, you never know what's believable and what's not. And there's always my friends, brothers, roommates, cousins, uncles nephew twice removed from the guy that he met on the bus is always a credible source that can't identify himself for fear of losing his job and all kinds of stuff like that so i mean who knows 
what's going on with the NX, if it'll have a physical disk drive, if it won't have a physical disk drive, I've heard both, so... But I think that's going to be our first, like, peek into what's to come down the road from the next PlayStation and the next Xbox. Uh, but again, like I said, I really hope they kind of take a lesson from Steam, who's done digital, di or Valve, uh, who's done digital distribution quite well with Steam. I'd even like to see them partner up with uh, websites like Green Man Gaming down the road. I mean, that would be awesome if I could, like, basically do all my digital game purchasing in one location. But, you know, we'll see. Like I said, it's it's hard to like kind of guess what they're gonna end up doing, um, and it, it, inevitably it would devolve into like we're gonna get fucked. But on the same token, what do you think? Do you look forward to all digital? Uh, do you think it's inevitable? Do you think the next console cycle will still have a disc drive for a physical medium? You know, where where do you think the future is going? What do you think needs to be put into place to protect to make you feel like your digital purchase is secure? Um, let me know in the comments below, and like always guys, I want to thank everybody for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Alright, have a good one.